slides are at the panel at the bottom. If you press the globe, you can choose the language of translation, either English or Ukrainian, whichever you want to listen in. If you don't choose any, then you will be listening in the original language. And as well, we are recording this seminar. So if you don't want to be on screen, you just switch off your, your video. Then I will start the recording. Uh, hello, everyone, my friends. And I have this pleasure of uh, being the host of this seminar. The first uh, presentation of Hanna Mandarenko. She is the candidate of sciences of uh, historical sciences, docent of the Karazian University. And she is interested in history. A history of a little uh, motherland, pedagogics, and international education. And today she is going to talk about problems and prospects of international education. The word is yours. Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, give me a second to share my screen with you. Uh, can you can you see the screen now? Yes. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank Indiana University for this program and the scholarship uh, created for Ukrainian researchers. This program has become a significant support for me, not only in financial side, because it stimulated me to pursue my creative research and has become an important landmark for me. I would like to thank Sara and Svetlana, our curators, who put so much effort into making this program work. I also thank my partner from Indiana University, uh, Dr. Patricia Kubo, for our monthly meetings, support and professional advice. Thanks also to the interpreters. Today, I would like to share with you my research on the problem of international education in Ukraine during war. My uh, research is still ongoing and I have a lot of plans for the future. Today, we will talk about development of international education in Ukraine before war, about the challenges we are facing uh, under war and about in, uh, foreign students during uh, this war period, about the questionnaire I had during my research. But to understand what challenges we face today, we need to remember how this uh, education was developing before war. As you can see, since 2016, the number of foreign students in Ukraine has been steadily increasing. And in 2020, due to COVID, we see a little decrease in the number. As of 2020, we had about 76.5 thousand students in Ukraine, representing 155 countries. The largest number of foreign students came from India, Morocco, Turkmenistan, Azerbaijan, Nigeria, etc. Uh, the Ukrainian State Center of, for International Education provided such figures on the distribution of international students by the country of their arrival. Overall, about 400 higher educational institutions in Ukraine provided educational service to foreigners. The most popular among students in recent years were the University of Karazin, Kharkiv National University, Kharkiv National Medical University, National Bogomolets University, Odessa National Medical University, Zaporizhia Medical University, and others. This map shows the distribution of international students by regions in Ukraine. As you can see, Kharkiv, Kyiv, and Odessa regions are leader, leaders here. The most pop, biggest number in Kharkiv can be explained by the big number of educational institutions and relatively little uh, payment for education. It should be noted that the most important field of study in Ukraine was medical education and adjacent specialties such as dentistry, general medicine, because medical diplomas of our universities are recognized in many countries of the world. Why foreign students chose Ukraine? 
First of all, Ukrainian universities were recognized for their scientific achievements, effective teaching technologies, and this was confirmed by top places in world rankings occupied by Ukrainian universities. And these positions are still retained in 2023. For example, my university took 550 position in this rating before quarantine and war, it was in top 500. Compared to other European countries, the cost of education in Ukraine is much lower. Thirdly, Ukraine was the most af uh, affordable country in terms of accommodation and food course. And fourth, foreign students living in Ukraine enjoy the same rights, freedoms, and have the same obligations as Ukrainian citizens. Since the beginning of war, the situation has deteriorated significantly, both in terms of the number of the first year students and the number of students on all other years of studies. Therefore, the universities and educators face a difficult task to return international students, raise the image of Ukrainian international education in the world. That's why researching the problem is extremely important. It is clear that international education in Ukraine is now under threat of its very existence due to Russian aggression. It is enough to say that in February 2022, more than 2,500 students from around the world were in the area of large-scale hostilities, and they had difficulty in evacuation. Students from Turkey, China, India, Pakistan, other countries have gone through extremely difficult experience and trauma. Will they really want to return to Ukraine after that? Will they advise their family and friends to study here? We do not know as of today. In total, since the beginning of the Russian invasion, the Ukrainian government helped to evacuate about 146,000 foreigners. Of them, about 20,000 students were from India alone. The most difficult situation with evacuation of students was in such cities as Sumy, Chernihiv, Mariupol, and Kherson. Of course, this caused a lot of speculation er around the process of evacuation. At the Shevchenko conference, Ms. Maria Zubritska sent a link to a poster of a movie made in Russia in cooperation with India on evacuation uh, by the Russian special forces of foreign students who allegedly were held captive by Ukrainians. Indeed, what can be said, it's complete nonsense. In turn, I would recommend you to watch an interview with Tatiana Maibarada, deputy head of the Department of International Cooperation and a lecturer at Sumy State University, who was evacuating the students and was taking them to the border. In her interview, she tells how it was happening in reality and she gives photos and video uh, evidence. In addition to the problem of evacuation from the most affected cities of Ukraine, uh, mass media also uh, speculated the problem of racism against foreign students, especially those from Nigeria. So there were posts on Twitter and Facebook about discrimination against African students and citizens who were not let into the trains or were not allowed to cross the borders with European countries. For example, student Alexander Somto, who studied management at, in Kiev, said that when they were trying to get on a train, they were told the priority was given to women and children. This is really how it must be during war. But African women were not the chosen ones. That's why we started to argue that they were pregnant and the women with children. Why they were not chosen? Why only white people were chosen? However, after some uh, quarrels, they were let in on the train. So the Nigerian government called on the Ukrainian authorities and neighboring countries uh, asking to uh, respect the rights of foreign students. However, however a number of uh, some organizations drew attention to the situation on the Ukrainian-Polish border in early days that the situation was difficult for everyone trying to cross it, irrespective of a citizenship. There are now many studies, collected video and written interviews 
memories of the evacuation of Ukrainians abroad. And all of them have those references to difficult experience, long lines, severe cold. The reason for such uh, situation was constant shelling around Ukraine, difficult humanitarian situation, and the general stress and panic among many evacuees. In the first weeks of evac evacuation, the situation was difficult for everyone. The state was not prepared for such volume of people leaving the country. Nevertheless, uh, some humanitarian trains additional were launched and additional checkpoints were opened quite quickly. Cases of residents did occur, but this is manifestation of the human factor, which has nothing to do with the official rules or policies with, of the Ukrainian authorities. Human rights defenders also reported problems encountered by neighboring EU countries, which refused to accept evacuees with non-Ukrainian and non-European citizenship, or who had no visas to EU countries. This resulted to spread of panic and despair at the border among non-EU citizens. And in turn, it provoked conflicts at checkpoints. So unfortunately, foreign students did experience difficult and long evacuation. Uh, of course, it all leaves some trauma uh, in their mind and their perception of Ukraine uh, as such. I want to show you a short story of the evacuation of foreign students. The situation in Sumy was a little bad because Russia was um, circling the, the city and it was hard to get out of it. It was so scary. And like a day before the, a day before the evacuation, there was a loud explosion close to where we live. It was so loud. We heard shelling sounds, we heard bombs, we saw the lights of bombs. Such a disastrous experience for everyone. It was, it was, it was hell. It was not that the problem because we had little bit food, and uh, the Ukrainian civilians who had firearms they were helping for the defense. So hats off to the Ukrainian people who were helping us. As a student, I, I was here. Everything was normal. This country is very peace, peaceful to us and very res uh, respectful to other uh, citizens. We needed a green corridor to, to get to get out, and finally, we went out. Перший крок евакуації його забезпечують автобусами. Далі вже ми підхоплюємо і веземо або ж до Львова, або за кордон, вже залежно від умовності з конкретним посольством. Next stop uh, is India. Unfortunately, there were some Unfortunately, we have certain losses of the foreign students. We don't know the certain statistics, but according to the survey of uh, the mass media, we uh, had the possibility to identify uh, some students in Kharkiv, for instance, as a result of shelling. Uh, some students were killed, G, for instance, uh, and some students from Kharkiv uh, Medical uh, Institute. Um, I would like also to say a few words about the resilience and uh, strength of uh, certain students. It was very difficult to do something, uh, to stay hard, uh, but uh, for instance, some students of um, uh, medical uh, institution of from Uzbekistan uh, provided medical assistance at the emergency department and um, uh, Linding uh, under a shelling uh, she was from China also provided medical assistance um, under conditions where there was an anxiety and very hard conditions because people had to think about other people. Uh, students of the um, Kharkiv um, um, University tried to provide medical assistance and other kinds of help uh, at the metro stations and provide humanitarian assistance and consultations uh, to um, other people. What situations we have so far? What situations 
situation we have uh, with the foreign students. Unfortunately, we do not have official um, uh, figures uh, in the open sources. Um, according to the Oblast Department of Education of Kharkiv Oblast, as of um, the 1st of January 21, now we have uh, approximately 12,165 um, students. Um, the majority of them are from Azerbaijan, Turkey, uh, Morocco, and other countries. And today we have uh, the uh, first year study uh, students um, who, uh, st uh, who are um, who study at the Kharkiv National University. Uh, to compare it with the previous figures, you can see the relevant um, uh, um, uh, deviations. Of course, uh, now uh, we can say that this is not considered as the highest medical education. In Nigeria, for instance, um, uh, they said that they would not recognize the diplomas um, um, issued by the in Ukraine uh, starting from 2022, because many of um, courses were conducted online. So uh, the way out was to find out the way of how to organize the um, studying courses in the west of Ukraine or uh, the adjacent countries. But still, we have uh, many problems in this respect because many of them many of the students uh, cannot afford actually to pay for uh, uh, the courses. But uh, if we uh, say uh, about the uh, studying abroad, uh, there are also certain problems. Uh, what uh, the foreign students um, actually have to do right now? In this year, uh, there was an anonymous questioner actually who entered or continued their uh, study at the National Kharkiv University University during the work conditions. About 84 students actually took part in this survey, and the most of them uh, took online courses. They anonymously filled in the electronic um, form uh, in English. Uh, 15 questions actually were provided about the their reasons of choice of Ukraine, their experience of evacuation, about their motives and consequences they had and the complications. Um, according to their age, uh, we divided them into certain groups um, aged from 16 up to 33 years, but the prevalent group is uh, 1921, uh, um, actually, uh, totally 41 person. Uh, so we have uh, 46 um, males and uh, 38 uh, females. Um, so India, Turkey, Egypt, Nigeria, Morocco, Tanzania, Lebanon. Um, uh, one student from Finland, uh, Germany, Iran, Iraq, uh, Palestine, Sudan, uh, Syria, and Japan. They represent different faculties, medical, legal, and uh, preparatory department. As we see, the medical department is of top priority right now. <clears throat> Uh, 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 asked why actually you have chosen the Kharkiv National University, they said that this university had the best rating, the top rating in Ukraine, a uh, high level of education, top professionals, medical education of the best level, less payment compared to the European countries. Uh, and um, uh, it was advised by friends uh, or relatives. One student from Egypt actually acknowledged that um, uh, her dream was um, to study at the Kharkiv National University. Another student from Turkey said that <clears throat> it was the most prestigious university of the highest level, and it was advised by his uh, um, friends. Um, uh, apart from it, um, the university is one of the oldest universities in Ukraine and has the top rating. In fact, um, uh, one of the students uh, from <coughs> Nigeria, of uh, Turkey, uh, uh, told that uh, she uh, got um, very good grades because um, actually the uh, quality of education was very high. And uh, I uh, do uh, know that um, actually that was the best university in Ukraine, and I would like to prolong my and uh, to continue my study. 
out of 84 um, respondents, um, uh, 62 of young people actually uh, um, met were in the city of Kharkiv uh, um, and their life was under threat. But nevertheless, they continued the study um, in the Kharkiv National University. Of course, it's quite difficult to to read such uh, responses and such feedback uh, because their life was very difficult. A lot of students prevalently from India uh, lived uh, in um, dormitories. They were in the... Um, in the shelters, uh, but they were not actually the shelters, um, so to say. It, uh, they were basements, in fact, <clears throat> and uh, they um, have chosen the metro stations as a shelter. They saw a lot of frightened people, actually, and, and of course, the Ukrainian people tried to help them, and they were um, very thankful and grateful for them. They were provided with water and food uh, and uh, 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 actually any kind of psychological, mental and physical assistance um, was provided to them. Uh, 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 the student from Morocco, aged 22, uh, lived in Lozava in Kharkiv Oblast, actually. Another student uh, st uh, from Finland uh, stayed also there, and uh, he said as follows, actually, he tried to buy mm, products, there were an endless lines um, uh, standing to the uh, supermarkets. Um, we tried to calculate how much food we have and tried to divide it into mm, uh, two weeks. Uh, of course, there was no chance to sleep because we were afraid to stay at home. We came to shelters and uh, slept there, metro stations in case. On the 17th uh, day, actually, we understood that we should go to uh, Kiev. On the 18th day, we uh, took the first train to Lviv, uh, spent there two days, um, and uh, we were very cold, we were frozen. Another student from India uh, also shares his experience. He could not understood what he did, actually. Uh, a lot of uh, representatives from the, their um, embassies uh, tried to help them. Some uh, students from Turkey actually tried to do it on their own without any help. And one student from India actually told that the evacuation was completely done by the embassy of India. One student from Morocco, age 24, actually um, said uh, the following. Uh, she spent uh, four days in Kharkiv. Um, uh, no day that was going by, actually, she saw the war and she was very afraid. When she was at the railway station, uh, she actually didn't uh, know uh, where to go. And actually, 17 hours, we were sitting on the floor um, in the uh, train. Other student from India um, remembers of uh, his experience of uh, playing of, of paying bribes to police in order to get uh, on the train, actually. One student damned Ukraine, Kharkiv, and the university and explained it as, uh, in the following way. I was very anxious. Uh, I was beaten by the Ukrainian police, uh, uh, being allegedly the Syrian-Russian uh, spy, because just I was the foreign student and uh, I experienced atrocities and racism. We understand that uh, that was not the best time uh, in his life and he had very hard emotional state and he uh, wished that the city of Kharkiv should be uh, destroyed completely. Of course, uh, we have a long way to go to destroy all those barriers and uh, to rehabilitate the people from this. One uh, student, um, Zehra uh, from Turkey, aged uh, 19, uh, said the following. Um, in the morning of uh, February 24, when I was um, 
uh, trying to take my time. My friends uh, uh, sent me the photos of explosions. When I called my uh, parents, um, I called. Uh, they told me that they knew everything. Then I told this information to my English teacher, and uh, she tried to re just uh, to give me some reinforcement. Um, my father told me that I uh, had the um, storage of um, uh, water and food and just not went out of my flat. And I felt myself alone, actually, because my knowledge of um, I, I could not uh, handle English, um, Ukrainian very good. Um, and I decided to uh, to stay at home all the time. My um, friends, uh, relatives, uh, of course, tried to help me, and they were the source of my morale. Uh, uh, I heard uh, the explosions um, and uh, the sounds of war, and it was very difficult for me because I was under this stress condition. For four days, I was staying in my apartments. Um, I saw tanks, I saw the explosions, um, and the, I talked to my mother, and um, it was a kind of um, support for me. Uh, she advised me to turn on the music and to dance. And when I, I did it, uh, it was very helpful because I can do nothing in this uh, situation. Even if I um, cried for days, uh, for hours, um, it would be in vain. Uh, so that is why I did my homework and submitted it online because I was very anxious and uh, but those um, those kinds of activities uh, helped me to overcome my anxiety, my fear uh, and my friend uh, actually transferred me uh, to the uh, railway station and then we, um, traveled to Romania and then uh, by uh, plane to uh, Istanbul. It was very a long journey actually but, the most important, um, actually, um, lesson was that you should take um, the best of the situation you are in. Uh, this uh, girl actually um, uh, suffered also the earthquake uh, in uh, Turkey, and uh, 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 her father and uh, grandmother also um, suffered um, as a result of this. But nevertheless, she was um, very resilient, and of course, uh, she said that uh, she would like to be a doctor. And those days in Kharkiv uh, were... Um, very, very difficult. Unfortunately, we're short out of time. The hmm. uh, important to understand why students are motivated to continue their studies in Ukraine. So the question was, why did you decide to continue your studies at Karazin University during war? And the answers were very similar to this answer of the student from Egypt. I continue because I love Ukraine. I love my university. To a large extent, this is a merit of specific universities who continued studying agreements on study and practice in Europe, Turkey, and Western Ukraine. One student from Nigeria said that university assured us that we as students should not worry and stay calm as there will be constant online lessons with teachers, instructors, or here is the response of a student from Morocco. There is no other option to continue my studies in my country, so the Institute also found a quick solution for us. It's very interesting to read uh, the following responses from the students. One student from India pointed out, it's hard to leave Ukraine in times like that, and Karazin University is one of the best. Even when I was in India, I was waiting, looking forward to coming back. I was thinking that it would be good to stay in university and all my students, all my group mates uh, hoped that Karazin will did a lot for us. We really believed they will not leave us uh, alone. Now we are students and studying in Ivano-Frankivsk. Glory to Ukraine. One student from Turkey pointed that after he came to Ukraine, he fell in love with this country. 
he lie he loves Karazin University and he will never leave this country or a student from Turkey wrote how excited they were about their teachers because the teachers have been really uh, nice and professional and she thinks that continuing uh, studies at this university is really a hope for the teachers as well thus the reasons for returning to university during the war can be grouped as follows 43 percent of respondents said that they love their university they believe that ukraine has high level of education and teachers 20 percent said that they love ukraine and consider ukrainians to be good people 30 percent said that they had problems with transferring to another university so they are staying here 11 percent said that they have no other choice and 13 pointed gave no answer next question of the questionnaire was how do you think the war affected the university but first uh, before i start analyzing the response i want to show you one more video which shows how the war really affected the university of karazin bombarded by Russian forces each day. This is one of the oldest universities in Eastern Europe, VN Karazin, Kharkiv National University. This university is a luminous place, a center of thought leadership and academic vitality. It is the alma mater of Nobel laureates, including biologist Ilya Mechnikov, physicist Lev Landau, and Sorry, had some technical problem with my presentation. Sorry. I will share my screen again. Sometimes it happens when you start showing video during sharing the presentation screen. Sorry again, as Svetlana said today, it's beyond us sometimes. We can have some unpleasant surprises. Uh, can you see my presentation now? So, this, the answers to this question, how, uh, in your opinion, war affected the university, was also uh, categorized in such a way. The majority of respondents said that it affected the quality of education. Uh, it was pointed by 35% of respondents. For example, one uh, student from Turkey wrote that online learning was a nightmare for every student. Nobody wants to study like this. The following response about online learning was a typical. Online medical education is not a good solution. Of course, students uh, mentioned specific problems with online learning in their responses, such as absence of electricity and Wi-Fi, cancellation of classes, frequent changes in the schedule that messed the whole day, and difficulty in uh, having lectures online. But mostly, it was noted that there was no personal contact between teachers and students. 26% uh, of respondents noted that the university suffer, suffered primarily in financial and economic way because a lot of physical damage was inflicted. One student from India wrote, I heard that Karazin buildings were badly damaged. In addition, many students left. Another 13% uh, pointed that mostly the students who were very depressed and suffered psychological stress, they were really in bad condition. For example, such a response uh, is quite often. It has ruined many students' plans for the future. It made our future very blurry and clear. It's unclear how to, uh, to continue, whether we should move to another country or whether we should stop our career. Here is another short uh, response of the student. We are depressed. So this experience of students from India, for example, were also related to the external policy of their home country. For example, one student from India mentioned 
that the standards of education behavior of teachers may change because European Union countries believe that India is helping Russia in this war. It is interesting that 20% of students showed that war did not affect the university. Nothing changed. For example, the answer of a student from Turkey shows that nothing has changed fundamentally and the students still continue studying here and they still want to study here. Or another answer that showed that the university has become even stronger. A student from Tanzania noted that it hasn't affected in any way because we can still communicate with the university and continue our studies. 8% of students said that the war had the greatest impact on the teachers who lost their homes, jobs, and suffered morally. 6% of respondents said that they did not know how the war affected. The answers to the question, what will you do? Will you return to Kharkiv when the hostilities in Ukraine end? Where uh, the following? They were distributed as follows. 68 students answered yes. Of these, one student from Egypt said he is already studying in Kharkiv since March 2023. Uh, some students, uh, freshman students, are ready to move to Kharkiv and start their studies, though they haven't been present there uh, at the beginning of hostilities. So the students who had war experience noted that they are ready to return under some conditions. First of all, the war should end and there must be some guarantees of a security provided to them. For example, such a response. I will be able to return when I'm sure that Ukrainians are not under threat of war. Or another answer. Now I am in one of Frankivsk and when the situation is normalized, I will come back to Kharkiv. Or another response. If the situation is good and Ukrainians join NATO, I will return. So the students who answered probably as to possibility of their return to Kharkiv were in the city at the outbreak of hostilities. However, some of those who received really traumatizing experience and answered no about the return, their return said that their parents would not let them return. One student from Turkey showed that she's not going to return because parents do not want to risk uh, their lives uh, even after the war. There are some exceptions uh, the, uh, among the students who were caught by the hostilities. For example, a 27-year-old student from Egypt points out that I will come back because I love Ukraine. I have lived five years here and I feel I belong here. Or one student from Turkey wrote, if things go better, I am ready to move to Kharkiv. I miss it so much. 20-year-old student from India writes, I am ready to come back. If teachers can cope with this situation, we will also be able to do it. One of the most important questions on the questionnaire was, what should university do to attract international students back? Here, I also tried to combine the answers into some groups. And the overwhelming majority answered there must be improvement in education, the quality of education. Firstly, students demanded to improve the quality of online education, to develop new, more convenient platforms, to control the schedule, and sometimes even to uh, assess and change some of the teachers who cannot cope with online education. They recommended to test them for their English knowledge before issuing them qualifications. For example, one of the typical answers was just do your job because some uh, teachers think they are still living in the Soviet Union. You must change the standards. And students from Nigeria advises professionals must be professional. The next most frequently answered uh, answer, a typical answer was the improvement of the conditions, uh, living conditions for the students. Here, they wished simplification procedure for getting visas, getting more uh, rights, uh, for example, for residency, liquidation of intermediary, um, intermediary agents who are hungry for money, some free consultations for foreign students, 
creating of representative uh, bodies for such students. They also expressed a great desire to deal with corruption at all levels. For example, a student from Morocco wrote, the rights of foreign students should be respected and they should be treated as human beings, not as working banks. Then there were such wishes as ending the war and creating security guarantees in Ukraine. Typical answer was stop the war, sign a peace treaty for at least 20 years. So in their responses, students also draw attention to advertising the university and ensuring safety of Ukrainian cities. For example, they wrote universities need now seminars in other countries to avoid fake news, to provide proper information so that others could join Karazan University with pride. Others advised to make cities more safe. It is necessary to make people believe that the city has returned comfort and safety. They also indicated the need to get in touch with the embassies who would uh, take more students to Ukraine. Significant number of students, preliminary medical students, said about normal conditions for offline medical education, which would make Ukrainian universities more attractive to students. Some foreigners believe that this should be done by establishing branches in European countries while others said that it's enough to expand the existing branches in Western Ukraine. You understand this problem arose not out of uh, anywhere. It has its reasons uh, because the education was really at the low level. Many students wrote about the need to increase practical training and allowing foreign students to work in Ukrainian hospitals. This is one of the unsolved problems of international education because we have a ban on foreign students working in Ukraine, which significantly affects the attractiveness of the country for foreigners. In, in Europe, European countries, part-time employment is possible for such students. They have opportunity to look for a job uh, during nine months after graduation, while uh, in Ukraine, they must leave the country within seven days. During this year, many projects and plans have been developed to restore Ukraine until 2032. There were separate projects which are related to uh, education. Unfortunately, higher education is not really mentioned uh, here. But it would be nice to make it more autonomous, like European and American universities. Unfortunately, uh, it was not mentioned. It should be said that during this year, Ministry of Education tried to improve the conditions. Період набору для іноземців визначає самостійно заклад вищої освіти у правилах прийому та оприлюднення and in, uh, in the 2022 the foreign students were allowed to uh, enter the internship uh, without any diploma so um, we can say that um, uh, in spite of the war uh, being waged in ukraine foreign students and international students uh, enter um, uh, our higher educational um, establishments uh, due to their image uh, and image uh, of the education as the european one and uh, acceptable uh, conditions uh, actually that we have here in Ukraine and some students are ready to uh, also to return to Kharkiv and also to accept the offline mode of education. Another uh, condition uh, for their return is uh, the improvement of uh, the quality of education, improvement of acceptance rules and um, afterwards the giving of uh, the uh, safety preferences and um, protection and shelter 
on the basis of the question of the survey and monitoring, we can outline the most important problems in this respect. First and foremost, the losses, which act, uh, unfortunately imp greatly impacted on the um, uh, higher secondary and higher school. And of course, secondly, we have um, uh, the problem with um, establishment of the departments, whether we should extend them or uh, somehow influence the number of students. Um, and of course, the uh, less money they pay, the less um, quality and uh, lessons they receive. <clears throat> Uh, we can um, uh, see the situation of creation with departments abroad is not expedient, actually, because some students who are in Poland, Romania, or Slovakia uh, probably would not will be reluctant to return to Ukraine. And this is a very high risk uh, for um, the higher uh, educational institutions from Kharkiv, uh, Sumy, or Kiev. Um, who have their departments in the west of Ukraine. Psychological and mental state of the students um, is also important and the, uh, the relevant uh, specialists uh, should take care of them. The uh, survey also shows that those young people are under stress condition uh, and depression and also um, of course for the long time we would have those psychological barrier uh, especially in the east of our country uh, the safety um, of the ukrainian places is also uh, very important even in the west of ukraine we have shelling we have missile strikes we have um, blackouts and other problems of course, um, this negatively influences um, the, um, attract, um, the the attractiveness of the Ukrainian institutions. And of course, the special uh, um, actions should be taken in this respect. Um, uh, cities should also elaborate certain evacuation uh, plans in case under um, in case the work conditions. We should also form the new brand or image of the international education of Ukraine, uh, the most of mass media of the world. Um, uh, actually, give the image of Ukraine as very dangerous country. So that is why our primary task is not uh, only to physically renew and rebuild our country, but to improve the image. And um, uh, uh, the last uh, item I would like to draw your attention to, I uh, mentioned it on Shevchenkovska conference, um, is the uh, adaptation of uh, the foreign students to our uh, social life. We should develop the relevant humanitarian policy in order to avoid conflicts in the society and the higher educational establishments would, should uh, take the responsibility. Our survey shows that we have um, a very uh, difficult challenge in order to create safe, inclusive, competitive uh, uh, environment uh, um, in compliance with the European standards. And we should do it right now. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Hannah, for this brilliant, uh, marvelous presentation. It is the third time that I am um, I listen to you. Uh, of course, now it's time for discussion, ladies and gentlemen, please um, can um, just um, uh, ask your questions. Mr. Vitali, please, I see that you have your question. Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Svetlana. Thank you, Hanna, for your very interesting and um, uh, profound uh, presentation. Uh, yes, uh, I just um, listened to the half of your presentation. Uh, I have one question and one short comment, uh, actually. Why do I think it is important? I'm not a demographist and not a sociologist, but like many of my colleagues and citizens who are engaged into the problem that we have, actually, um, 
understand the uh, problem from uh, uh, the Institute of Demography has uh, certain forecasts and uh, statistics. Um, I do not want to say that their forecasts are ca a kind of catastrophe, but they are not very promising being the citizen of Ukraine. Actually, I was um, engaged in some work uh, abroad, but my heart is here in Ukraine. We can see that um, uh, from the analytical data that we have, um, the number of population of Ukraine will decrease, actually. This is information from the open sources, I would say, but I would like to um, draw your attention to the um, uh, analysis conducted uh, recently. Our sociologists uh, say uh, the following, that our birth rate actually uh, decreases. We cannot say about four or five people per family. Some families will return to Ukraine, some will not. But nevertheless, they say whether they uh, we like it or not, but we are polycultural, polyethnical country, but uh, we should take into account a pragmatic aspect of this um, uh, um, uh, component. We should have uh, educated, uh, smart people. And of course, um, we are very proud that uh, many foreign students are here. But uh, pragmatically, we should be interested that um, the students from um, Egypt, from Lebanon, of course, should be um, very good specialists, uh, and they should stay in Ukraine. They should stay of help our country. But the question is as follows. Uh, partially, I was not sure that it, it is necessary to uh, ask this question, but uh, the uh, I do believe that the radical question was different. Uh, it should be asked as follows. Uh, would you like to relate your fate with Ukraine in the future? What is your opinion about this? Maybe you should paraphrase your question and your questioner. Uh, thank you. Thank you for your comment. Um, yes, we... Um, of course, our questioner did not include um, uh, such a question, but... Um, uh, those uh, students actually um, uh, answering the question, are you ready to return to Ukraine? They gave uh, the answer, yes, we are ready. We love this country. We are ready to work in this country. We belong to this country. We are compatriots, actually, especially if we speak about me uh, medical workers. Um, uh, so six or seven years they live in uh, Ukrainian cities, and of course many of them uh, are eager to um, uh, to rem uh, to stay here in Ukraine. They have families here, uh, they have their relatives, friends here. We have uh, approximately twenty percent of students who are willing to stay in Ukraine, especially from India, because I um, I've been working with international students for more than five years, and they say actually that the climate is better than in our country, the conditions are better, so they are willing to stay here in Ukraine for more. Uh, thank you very much. Um, we have some time for another question, Nadia, please. Uh, thank you, thank you for this uh, brilliant presentation. When we talked about uh, the complaints of students about uh, mediators, about intermedi uh, intermediaries, in 2019 there was a scandal in Kropivnitsky um, um, related to medical students. There were public rallies, some mediators um, took my money from them uh, for some services and there was a kind of fraud and there was a kind of terrible story actually. And when I um, knew about that story, I understood 
understood that, of course, there are legal mediators and illegal mediators who can cause um, this kind of difficulties for um, the students and for the image of the, the our uni for our universities. What what do you know about the present situation? Uh, what do we have um, at present? Uh, what should be done in order to change the situation for the better? Thank you, thank you for your question. It's very uh, urgent, actually. Such mediators mm, are representatives, actually, come from those countries uh, where uh, 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 the students uh, uh, came from. So uh, they uh, uh, make some advertisement uh, tell about tell them about the um, higher educational um, establishments and um, that so-called um, people of course uh, do harm to them so our task in this case is to provide to disseminate uh, the information about the legal mediators uh, because um, uh, now the internship uh, is opened uh, for uh, the foreign students and um, of course um, there were some cases where students paid for travel for entering the university for admittance but of course um, in vain uh, according to the special uh, center's data uh, now we do not have um, the right to cancel the activity of mediators in Ukraine because the universities on their own cannot provide visas, um, coordination work. So the work of mediators is uh, rather important, but uh, their trustworthiness and faithfulness is another issue. And our Center for International Education is working on this problem, of course. And now we are doing everything we can uh, in order to um, uh, to address this problem in the best way possible. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. Any other questions, ladies and gentlemen? Uh, Maria, please, the last question, very brief uh, question. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, Speaking about the corruption issue, everyone uh, talks about uh, the educational sphere. We know that this is one of the most corrupted uh, sphere uh, in Ukraine. It depends um, on the language competence, uh, of course. Um, not every not every uh, teacher of English lecturer has the certificate, uh, international certificate of um, the English lecturer. Speaking about uh, the Ukrainian language, uh, now, um, uh, in the beginning, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the students for, from Turkmenistan uh, uh, took the third place. They actually were not aware of the Russian, of the Ukrainian English language and they were the source of corruption because they were working uh, using the old schemes, actually. So such corruption risks and standards uh, uh, influence greatly the quality standards. And of course, it de influences greatly, of course, uh, uh, the our dependence on the international standards. Yes, um, first of all, <clears throat> speaking about uh, the Russian language. Starting from 2014, we denied uh, actually uh, the um, studying uh, in the, um, uh, the Russian language. Speaking about diplomas and their confirmation, especially the English language, those lecturers um, <clears throat> should receive uh, a diploma not less than B2 level. <clears throat> Possibly uh, such a tutor can have some additional supplementary classes, but starting from 2020, uh, knowing the language was the obligatory uh, requirement for teachers. Concerning corruption, the, yeah, 
in our university, we didn't have a lot of students from Turkmenistan. So as soon as Russian language was left out about 2014, the number of these students decreased because they stopped arriving to Ukraine as they do not understand Ukrainian or English. Uh, thank you for, for your comment. Thank you, dear colleagues. Unfortunately, the time has run out, but I think that you, if you have any other questions to Ms. Hanna, you can use our chat room. I think we can get to the 